Yakında New York'ta gibi bir vatandaşımız avariye geçiş koyan ve avariyeden ki gün bir geç günden ki gün onge insurance yani suğurta kampanyasının gibi vakili telefon koyan ve darol 2000 dolar pul taklif koyan. Bana şu 2000 doları alayım. Hamma kerekli kucetlerine imza koyayım ve bizge umumun hiç anıqa davayız bulmaz diye kerek deyken de benim şu vatandaşımızda ya ki pul kerek koyan ya ki yürüyecek tamamlama bilimsizliği ama kaysa sabab asası koyan bilmadım o lakin bana şu iki minu o gano ve kerekli hamma kucetlerine imza koyan aslında eğer de bana şu vatandaşımız az vakitlerine müracaat koyan de o boğma gano da 30 ya ki 40 bin dolar kompensasyon olgen bolar yedi. Hazır ilk gününde New York'taki vatandaşlarımız aynen manşağın ki avariyle geçip olgenden ki yen advokatsız doğrudan doğru suğurta kampanyalar bilen uzları muzakaralar olup barışıya hareket kışadı. Çünkü asasi maksat advokatlarge tolemezlik. Hazır da stabla bir olamız. Uzı advokatki kancı tolemezlik. Kalı verse kanaka asasi on ta hata bar ki, eğer de biz vatandaşlarımız advokatsız suğurta kampanyasıya doğrudan doğru müracaat kılışsa ve en asasi ise bu masalada advokatna kanaka asasi tavsiyeleri bar. Şun şun ham, bana şu hama savalarını biz bugün New York'ın en yerik yürüzik kampanyalarından biri Gabriel Law kampanyasının advokatı Paul Yulitsky'ye veremiz. Hello Paul. Hey, how are you today? I am well. What about you? Doing great. So, uh, the first question for today is what does the client has to pay out of pocket for your representation? So, generally speaking, in New York State, personal injury actions have a contingency fee retainer. What that means is the client does not pay anything mm. out of pocket. The firm takes on the cost of the litigation and we do not get compensated unless we get a settlement or some type of judgment for the client. So we don't get paid unless the client gets paid. And then even in that situation, the client doesn't pay us themselves. We get paid through the settlement. We get paid from the insurance company, the person who's responsible. So the client doesn't have to pay anything out of pocket. Oh, nice. So uh, it means that's free of charge for clients? Essentially, yes. Nice. So would you please tell us the most common tan mistakes which client uh, um, has to do if he or she wants to have all the negotiation directly with uh, insurance company without the lawyer. Okay, although we really don't recommend any claimant speaking with the insurance company on their own because more often than not they'll probably do more harm than good, there are many common mistakes and let's outline them right now. So what I believe to be the worst mistake is lying to the insurance adjuster. They might ask you if you have ever been injured before, have you ever been in an accident before? And sometimes people think that if they lie and say no, that it's gonna increase the value of their case. But that is a huge mistake. The insurance company adjusters have access to something called an ISO search. So with just your name, your date of birth, they're gonna be able to search and see if you've ever been involved in an accident. If you lie from the first conversation, it destroys your credibility, and now they're not going to take anything you say seriously. So that's one thing that you should always avoid. Okay, honesty is the best policy. Okay. Absolutely. Number two? So number two, and this is an important thing, this is something that lawyers generally learn in law school from day one. In a negotiation, you never want to make the first demand and you never accept the first offer. So the insurance adjuster might ask you, what amount are you looking for to resolve this case? You never want to tell them a set number because it's possible that their initial offer might be in excess of what you're even looking for. What you'd like to say is, I would want to be compensated fairly for my injuries. And now it puts the onus on them to make that initial offer. And now you could gauge where they're looking at and what type of valuation they're putting on your claim and your injuries. So it means never ever accept the first offer. You never want to accept the first offer and you never want to make the first demand. Put the ball on in their court and let them make the first move and then you judge their actions accordingly. Okay, number three? Number three is if they do make an initial offer or if they say, hey, will this number get your case settled? Always confirm that they actually have the authority to make that offer. Ask them to put that demand or that offer in writing. This way you can always say, okay, this was offered. Because many times throughout the course of a case, an adjuster might get switched out or substituted by a colleague. 
and you want documentation proving that they had already made that offer to you so you could always refer back to it. So all the offers, they have to be on the paper. You want it in paper. Not just orally, yes? They will try to make it an oral offer, but you always want them to follow up in writing. This way you could refer to it at a later time. That's evidence. Yes. Okay, and number four? You always have to remember that just because the adjuster on the side of the phone or online is, they sound like a nice guy, doesn't mean that they are your friend. You have to remember that they work for a company and their job is to minimize the exposure of what their company or their insurance company is paying you for your injuries. So every dollar that they save their boss is one less dollar in your pocket. Treat them with respect, be courteous, but remember, they're not your friend. So, we shouldn't forget that the representative of insurance company is not our friend. Absolutely. Nice. Then number five. Many times an adjuster might ask you for a settlement range. What, what amount are you looking for to resolve your case? And if you give them, let's say, uh, two different numbers, let's say between 100,000 and 150,000, they, once they know what your bottom number is, they will never offer you a penny more than your bottom number. It just won't happen. And not only won't they offer you that bottom number, they're gonna work you down and they're gonna tell you about the weaknesses of your case. And they're gonna tell you about all the things that are bad about your case and try to force you to take a number that's worth less than your bottom number. So try to avoid ranges at all costs. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to understand that uh, they can offer some uh, low cost, but before we have to discuss every details with the lawyer. You should always consult with an attorney, especially before offering any type of settlement range. Okay, number six. So you do have a responsibility to provide the insurance adjusters with certain documentation and responses to some of their inquiries. But some pr responses might actually hurt your case, while others might make your case stronger. An experienced attorney knows how to handle that, and they know what you are required under the law to provide and what you can get away with not providing. So you do want to provide the proper documentation of your medical bills and your expenses. But sometimes there are notes that might actually hurt your case. So it's recommended to consult with an attorney before providing any type of written statement or oral statement because you don't want to say something that might actually hurt your case. The goal is to maximize the compensation you receive and by saying something wrong or providing something that could damage your case, you might be kind of damaging your case before an attorney could even get in there and represent you. So every word should be through the lawyer. Absolutely. All communications with an adjuster should be made through an attorney, but these are some of the common mistakes that claimants make when they try to do it on their own. Okay, and the number seven, please. So number seven is this. Although the insurance adjuster is someone we're working with and we're trying to resolve the case, we do have to keep in mind that they're not actually our friend. But at all times, you don't want to be rude. You want to be professional. You want to be courteous. These adjusters have hundreds of files in their, in their repertoire that they're trying to actively resolve. And if you come off as someone who's, let's say, troubled or you're, you have a problem and you're being argumentative, they're just going to stop responding to your calls. They're going to put your case at the back of their stack and that might delay the resolution of your case by months, if not even years. So don't be a rude person and don't forget the proverb that manners make us man. Absolutely. Cool. And number eight, please. So many people think that when they get on the phone with an adjuster, it, it's their time to tell them about all of their pain and all the suffering. But in reality, the adjusters don't care. The adjusters are not going to make an evaluation of your case based on your current complaints of pain. What they do is they're going to review the medical records that are taken and documented at the time of your treatment. So the time to complain about your pain and to make sure that it's well documented is when you're with your medical provider, when you're in the hospital, when you're at a physical therapy clinic. That's when you talk about everything that's bothering you. That's where you talk about your complaints of pain. So it could be well documented in the medical records because that is what the adjuster and his supervisor are going to review when determining what type of offer to make to settle your case. So collect and keep all the documents medical documents and all of the documents which can have any connection with the cases, yes? Absolutely. Cool, and number nine, please. So this is a very important one. When you're speaking with a medical provider or a doctor or you're in the hospital, it's very important that you actually relate your pain and injuries to the accident that is the basis of this claim. If you are involved in a car accident 
and you don't mention that you hurt your head, your neck, your back as a result of that accident, and you just go in saying, a week after the accident, this is what bothers me, the insurance adjuster is gonna review those records, and they're gonna say, well, nowhere in the record does it say it's because of a car accident. How do we know you didn't trip and fall in your own home a week after the accident? So it's always important that when you're with a new medical provider that you relate the basis of your injuries and your complaints to the accident that is the subject of this claim. Okay, uh, so the client has to say all about all of his pains, yes, because uh, if it forgets or if it ignores some kind of pains, uh, uh, and um, that could be very bad for his uh, case for the future, yes? Absolutely. If you don't complain about all of your pains and complaints early on in the litigation or early on after you started treating, the insurance adjuster might say, well, you didn't complain about it at the time of the accident. How do we know that it's actually related to this accident and that you weren't injured in some other way at a later time? Thank you. And the last one, number 10, please. So the 10th rule, and this is something that's very important, when you're getting this medical treatment, it is imperative that you have the correct insurance being billed for the services and care that is being rendered. So in New York State, if you're involved in a motor vehicle accident, for example, your no-fault benefits and your no-fault insurance should be the only insurance that is billed for all of the care and treatment that you receive. This way, when the insurance adjuster files an authorization for those medical records, all of your care and treatment from the initial day at the hospital to the physical therapy offices to MRIs and everything in between, everything will be well documented and they'll be able to do a faster and more thorough evaluation of your case, making sure that you get the top compensation that you should be entitled to. Okay, that um, seems very interesting, but and now we understand very well that if uh, we are in a uh, car accident or any types of accident, never ever um, contact with the insurance company directly without a lawyer. So, Paul, at the end of this interview, would you please tell us some top recommendations for Uzbek community in New York? So, the top recommendation that we can always give to any prospective client is this. If you are a loved one or injured in any type of accident, go get the medical treatment and care that you need right away. But the important thing is do not have any type of prolonged conversation with the insurance adjusters. They know that you are in a time of need. They know that you are in a position of weakness. And that's why it's always important to consult with an attorney first, to be able to go through your options, see what's available to you, to ensure that you receive the top compensation for your injuries. Thank you very much. What was really interesting. And I hope our followers understand the how it's important to have a lawyer and solve all of the problems concerning car accident and accident at all. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, New York Umuman gaplashmanganligiz maqul. Birinchidan, advokatga siz pul to'lamaysiz. Advokat umumiy kompensatsiyadan o'zini foizni oladi xolos. Va eng asosiysi, agar siz advokat bilan uh, advokat orqali sug'urta kompaniyasi bilan o'z muomalalaringizni hal qiladigan bo'lsangiz, demak siz kattaroq kompensatsiya olishga imkoniyatingiz bo'ladi. Har ehtimolga qarshi Demek ki, Gabriel Uvoni va qolaversa Pouni telefon raqamlarini ushbu videodagida yozib qoldiraman va agarda xudo ko'rsatmasa shunaqa vaziyatga tushib qolsanglar, birinchi o'rinda 911 ga, ikkinchi o'rinda esa mana shu videodagida biz ko'rsatgan telefon raqamiga darhol telefon qilishingizni iltimos qilamiz. Soat nechchi bo'lishidan qat'i nazar, kechasimi, ertalabmi, uni farqi yo'q. Kelishdingmi? Dostlar, agar ushbu videolarga yoqqan bo'lsa, bitta like sizlarga ham qo'yib ketsin, tabakini dislike bilan aralashtirmagan holda va haligacha agar da bizning kanalimizga obuna bo'lmagan bo'lsangiz, hozirni o'zida ushbu videoda tushib, demak, qizil tugma nishon topamiz. U yerda o'zbek tilida yozilgan obuna bo'lish, rus tilida podpisatsiya, ingliz tilida subscribe va uni oldida qo'ng'iroqchani rasmiy ham bor. Agar da uni ham bosib qo'ygan bo'lsangiz, demak, har safar biz yangi video qo'ygan paytimizda sizlarga xush xabar keladi. Mr. Tabek TV kanalida yangi video qo'yildi. Nima qildim? Mr. Tabek TV kanalida va New Yorkdagi Gabriel Ovo kompaniyasida Paul Yulitski bilan bo'ladigan intervyularda ko'rishganda ko'rishguncha. Thank you very much. Thank you.